Professional sport has always been historically associated with one thing, men. But times are changing. You're watching Beneath the Surface, presented by Rockwall. In this episode, we're going to discover how FIFA is working with the First Nations of Australia and the Maori communities in New Zealand to welcome players and fans alike at the Women's World Cup in 2023. We visit the Matatu rugby team here in Christchurch to discover how the only female rugby team on the South Island is forging its own identity. And I discover how CLGP is changing the game for the next generation of professional female athletes. So if you're interested to learn how global sport is fast-tracking equality, bridging the experience gap, and empowering the next generation of female leaders, be inspired because you're in the right place. One of the coolest things about CLGP is you get to see the best sailors racing the world's fastest boats. But as I visit the iconic cities on the CLGP circuit, I wonder what makes these places unique away from the race course. I've discovered people from all over the world striving for a better future, redefining social responsibility and driving technical innovation, redesigning how we think about sustainability. If you're interested in finding out what makes these places really tick, join me as we go beneath the surface. And this time we're in the most southerly venue on the CLGP calendar, Christchurch on New Zealand's South Island. Now, how much do you know about Christchurch? It's the largest city on New Zealand's South Island. It was established in 1850 by European settlers and it's named after Christchurch in Oxford, England. The city has a really diverse population, including Maori, Pacific Islander, Asian and European communities. And it's really important to the New Zealand national identity to retain that Maori heritage. Nature is extremely important to New Zealanders and the Maori, who are the indigenous people of this country, have a strong cultural connection to the environment. Inspired by this, here's a sustainable 60 seconds in Christchurch. First off, the big picture. New Zealand is looking to set a global standard by going carbon neutral by 2050, and renewable energy is central to achieving that. About 80% of the country's energy already comes from renewable sources, and just by the airport in Christchurch, they're about to install 300,000 solar panels, making the largest solar farm in the country. And some of that renewable energy powers one of the most iconic modes of transport in the city, the fully electric Christchurch tram. And on that note, electric vehicles make up 20% of the region's buses, with the aim of getting to a zero emissions fleet by 2035. During the earthquakes that hit Christchurch just over a decade ago, the city suffered significant tree and green space loss. So in the next 50 years, it's looking to implement its urban forest plan which will result in increased biodiversity, more green spaces and carbon trapping. And on that note, New Zealand has committed to planting 1 billion trees by 2028 as part of its efforts to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and combat climate change. Over the past few years, women's sport has experienced a real cultural boom. More and more female athletes are benefiting from global platforms to showcase their talents and attract sponsorship and investment from the world's biggest brands. But it's not all about big money. There's increased participation at grassroots too. Higher attendances by women watching women and more opportunities for females to get to the top of their sport. We're off to meet Sheila, Head of Sustainability at the FIFA Women's World Cup to find out how football's governing body is planning to welcome fans and players to what may be the most inclusive and celebratory sporting event of all time. For us, this will be one of the largest women's sport event that's happening at the moment to be co-hosted by Australia and Aotearoa New Zealand. This is such an incredible time for women in sport and people talk about sport as a essentially a microcosm reflection of what's happening in and around our society and one of the biggest opportunities that we have for these two countries is to really shine and share a spotlight on First Nations and Maori communities. It's the panel of three fierce First Nations women and three fierce Maori women who are representing all sorts of parts of this ecosystem and society and they are giving us guidance on how do we make this tournament one that reflects respect for those who have come before us. It is about voice for those who are voiceless and, and that includes our called communities, our culturally and linguistically diverse communities as well as all abilities experience as spectators, as people who love football. What fans will see when they come will be integrated as many ways as we can possibly find. The language that we use, the things that they hear in stadia, 
We have it even from the brand creation and having the input and the design by First Nations and Maori artists. This is a first for us as a tournament. When we have 1.5 million people come to attend our, our World Cup across the 10 cities and the two nations, people are going to be welcomed onto this land. It is our opportunity, but as well obligation to pay respect to those who have stewarded the land for so long. Today's ideals are, are tomorrow's standards. So across Australia and Aotearoa, New Zealand, we've got 10 stadia and they're pushing themselves to raise that ideals, to be their standard. And their standard is going to be meeting minimum green building expectations. One of the most proud moments is the consideration of a really holistic approach to sustainability. One of the things that we're focused on is really leveraging the visibility of the tournament so that we can either seed ideas or be able to role model good behavior. This is something that we see in a lot of other sports. Sail GP, for instance, working in terms of sustainability from an environmental perspective and progressing women. Sail GP's got their programs. We've got various programs. Of course, it's in our DNA as a women's sport. This is going to ignite a whole new generation of young girls and females to play. I'm one of those girls who, when I was young, and when women, US women's soccer came through, it literally changed my life. And I know that that's the same experience people will be having, you know? I cannot wait to see how it continues to grow after 2023. And it's not just about football. These conversations around inclusivity, opportunity, and identity are being had across many sports. Here in Christchurch, the sport has generally revolved around one team, Crusaders, one of the best rugby teams on the planet. But now, there's a new team in town, and Rockwell Denmark's LGP team's Katja hits the pitch to find out more. Sport has been super important in my life and provided me with many opportunities. I want to learn how the method to is leveling the playing field in rugby, and how it's representing communities and women of New Zealand's South Island. New Zealand Rugby said about two years ago they were going to start a women's super rugby team and there was going to be four teams competing so the Crusaders were given the job um, to set up the women's team. Genuinely I believe that women's rugby and women's sport as a whole should never live in the shadow of the men's team. It's theirs. It's not another team's jersey. It is absolutely ours and uniquely feminine to them. So Matatu has its own identity, right? Matatu was a name that was gifted us to, by our local mana whenua, Naitu Hiriri. So it stands for the mana that Aoraki has as being the watchful guardian of everyone who resides within the South Islands. Um, and you see it within our branding, we have glacial colours, we have the monga, the mountains, we have the rivers that um, represent all of the South Island. For us, when we're looking at um, partnerships or sponsorships or ways that we connect back in the, into the community, we're always thinking about how do we uphold that value of sustainability. We're often thinking about whether we can go out tree planting or doing things like that. Hi everyone, welcome. My name is Martha. I play for Matatu. How I would describe Matatu is family. What it means to me is being a part of something bigger than myself, creating pathways for those coming after us and breaking those glass ceilings. This is our captain. This is her try. And there's Di again. Yeah, I just pass it. <laughs> Matatu belongs to us, we are Matatu. That comes with that sense of pride and belonging and knowing that what we're doing and what we're wearing is absolutely 100% us. It's such an amazing opportunity to be able to train full time. We've only been having Super Rugby Open here for two years and it's grown so much. Matieli's come in from the right. Women's rugby is really taking off and we could be doing anything in five years. And if they see um, a Polynesian girl out there doing awesome, then they think, oh, I could do that. This morning we are doing breakfast here at Aranui Community Trust, a harder hit uh, suburb in Christchurch. They do breakfasts here every Tuesday and Wednesday to the uh, children going walking past the school, just so they know that they're getting some good food in them for the day. We've got some values we live by in our team. To one of our connections, it's just connecting back to the community. We're giving back to them because, you know, they're our supporters. We want them to support us, but we want them to have role models for their children. The results are important, yes, but they're not the main factor. What I want to see as success is the ability for all our players to be able to express themselves and perform to their highest peak. Fans, sponsors, they love watching the women's game. Oh, it's fast paced. They genuinely look like they're having 
a great time out there. And they're playing really good quality rugby. Good ball from Bremner off the top. They're creating their own legacy in the game, which is awesome. It's pretty cool to learn about the Meta 2 and see how female athletes are progressing in this country. I just immediately felt a, a strong connection to these girls. This team is really putting a lot of in, effort into growing the athletes and becoming who they are as individuals to make a good team. And it really resonates how they're creating their own space and identity in this sport, just like us in CLGP. Alongside the progressive mindsets of FIFA and the Matatu, CLGP is itself revolutionising women's sport by creating pathways for world-class females to reach the top of sailing and also inspiring the next generation to dream. And just a stone's throw away from the CLGP racetrack in Littleton Harbour, there was a full house present inspired by the stories of female athletes currently tearing it up on the CLGP circuit. The Women's Pathway Program is opening the door for us to, to start getting some of those opportunities that will lead to us take over these boats in the future. We just want to be able to race. I think um, really try to be in touch with your feminine values. That's a, a challenge for me. I, normally it's easier to just put it all away and act along and play all cool, but, but actually it's really, really good to, to sometimes be vulnerable and open up and, and make, make each other share so that uh, you can develop together. I really feel grateful to be able to go around and meet all these inspiring women and also young women or girls that are sailing. It gets so much energy. We kind of have some community. We, we kind of we understand each other and being able to inspire and uh, empower each other, that's really huge and I think that's what needed uh, as a group. <laughs> We can't go up and change the world as individuals, but as a group, I'm sure we'll be doing great things. It's kind of inspiring because not many people would go against everything that's kind of already there. But she has, so that's kind of cool. We are on the right track for sure, and I hope that uh, we can take some fights so you guys <laughs> doesn't need to take them. And uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> It's really inspiring to see great female athletes being championed across the world of sport. Voices are being heard and tangible actions are being taken to ensure that this is not about window dressing, but it's about building inclusivity and opportunity into the very fabric of sport. And it just goes to show when you bring together world-class sports like football, rugby and sail GP to share their values and collaborate on these issues, we really can't fail to inspire the next generation of female athletes. Next time on Beneath the Surface, we're off to one of the most innovative places on the planet, San Francisco. And it's also where CLGP reaches its dramatic climax with the end of season million dollar shootout. This episode of Beneath the Surface was brought to you by Rockwell.